Cooper aim, I'm bussin' uh, Buss it, buss it, buss it, buss, buss it It is Mitch. Welcome back to another video. I apologize in advance for any wind noise. There's, you know, I'm in front of a field. There's going to be a little bit of wind. We're going to do a rig rundown. Um, this is going to be late 2021. So the last one I did was 2019 and the car's actually changed probably the most it ever has in that sort of time. Yeah, this is going to be a little run through. Everything I know about the car, what I've done to it and um, anything that you might want to know about this model. So starting off, it is a 2001 LN167 uh, Hilux, obviously. It has the 5 LE motor in it, which is the 3 litre diesel, inline 4, um, naturally aspirated with an electronic fuel injection. It came as a you know pretty relatively stock car. It was um, a paddy wagon for the police before it was in my family's hand. My dad bought it off auctions, and then he used it as a work vehicle for about 10 years, and then it sort of sat in the shed for another five. And then um, I inherited it, which was which was awesome. Very thankful for that. And quick story: I never used to like the car at all. I always wanted to get like a street car, a low, a low fast car. But um, yeah, it just sort of grew on me. And then I mean, yeah, the rest is history. Obviously, it being uh, you know a three liter four cylinder diesel, it's not exactly fast. But hey, that's all right. It goes off road. You hub the locks. Like, you lock the hubs, and it'll do whatever you point it at. So we'll start from the front, work back. Um, and then I'll take you on the inside as well. So at the front we've got just a regular TJM bull bar. It used to have, um, it actually was the same bar that was on it during the last review, except um, I, I said I was never going to do a body lift. Ended up doing a body lift, raised the bar, um, and then cut those hoops off. So I've actually custom made these hoops um, over each side, welded them in place there. Um, you'll see these just about on every other Hilux that you see. Either that or ARB. So, I mean, I just custom up a little bit, made it look a little different. I do want to be making a custom bull bar sometime in the future, so stay tuned for that. Let me know if you want to see me try and fold up a bull bar. In terms of lighting, as you can see, there's a fair bit going on. Also, with the headlights, these are just aftermarket headlights that you'll find to fit these bucket pans. Just look on eBay for uh, 2001 or whatever year your Hilux is, and then just look aftermarket LEDs and this will pop right up. And we've got these four Kings spotties. We've got two nine inch and then two seven inch on the side. I don't know, just sets it apart a little bit. So I've got those four there. Um, then I've got this little light bar at the front, which um, which everyone always calls out for looking stupid, but but I um, I don't know, it's, it's got a sentimental value. That was the first ever thing that I put on the car, first mod I ever did. So. I mean, I don't see it leaving anytime soon. It's definitely staying. You watch me take it off in the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, that's uh, lighting. Don't have any light bar on the roof, just because I realized that, you know, when I did have one on the roof, all it did was light up the bonnet and reflect that onto the window. Then we've got antennas here. These are just standard six point something decibel, you know, your classic unit ins. Um, this one is actually plugged into my radio. This one is just for show. As in, the, you can, I've always ran two antennas. Um, I've sort of put them at a bit of an angle apart from each other. I don't know why. I just, they ended up, they were a bit loose one day and it parked like that. And I liked how it looked because it sort of accented the two bars at the side. And so I ended up keeping that. But anyway, underneath the bull bar here, we've got a King's Dominator winch. You know, nothing too special. It's just your stock standard cheapy winch. It has never let me down. Um, obviously don't want to jinx it, but um, yeah, I've had this on the car for almost two years now. Ever since then it's been on and it has pulled me out of bog holes, up hills. Um, it, is, it has done just about everything. Yeah, I can't fault the winch. Um, you know, it's tucked in there, you can't really see it too well, but yeah, it does well. So that's the winch that I'm running. Coming along to the side here, we've got a just a safari snorkel. Helps, uh, helps the car breathe a little better. I went with the safari, not the Stano, because it was cheaper than the Stano at the time. It might actually be more expensive now because they're more, you don't see them as much anymore and there's a lot more Stanos, but um, safari sets it up. It looks really nice. Um, and so under here, I've also got these rubber guards that I've just sort of bolted in. That was just to help with the poke. Then obviously we have these bars, these scrub sliders, scrub bars, rock sliders, whatever you want to call them. Um, these were custom made for the car when it had the tub and everything by CEL Fabrication. So they were fabricated to fit a two inch body lift. Um, I ended up taking the body lift out after the SAS. Um, so I sort of modified them to suit. And obviously we custom made this bar that sort of tapers down and bolts into the bull bar there. Um, and I think that's just, I mean, 
protects the side of the car, front of the car real well. I have used them a hell of a lot. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll know that um, having protection on the car is definitely important. Coming up to the top here, we've just got regular Rhino rack sort of roof rack. Um, everyone's got one of these, they just sort of clamp in. Nothing too fancy going on with the rails. Um, one day maybe, but don't see that happening anytime soon. We've got a 110 watt King solar panel on the top and that actually does the trick. We'll go inside and I'll show you my little 12 volt setup, but that charges that up and it keeps it topped up. So then on the back, um, this is probably where the car changes I mean the most since the last video. I've obviously taken the tub off and made a tray canopy, uh, a tray setup and it has seen a lot of changes, you know, it has seen a lot of changes full stop. Um, so I used to have the canopy on it, then I took the canopy off, then I made this rack and stuff like that. So as it is right now, we have this, it's all steel, fantastic workmanship, amazing welds, perfect cuts. No, I'm only kidding, but it's just a steel tray. Um, these bars here to protect, these were the continuation from the actual whole set of the protection bars. I sort of turned them 90 degrees, cut them off side to side and welded them in place. Then I also happened to take the old basket that I had, chopped it off and, and continued the bar along here. And under the, under the tray we have these toolboxes. I actually cannot remember who made these toolboxes. I don't know where I got them from, but they do the trick. Got random mud guards there too. On the tray we have this rack that uh, holds my rooftop tent up. Um, can't go wrong with the old rooftop tent. It loves it. I love it. It works super well. And I've also got this custom sort of bracket here that holds my shovel and my high lift jack. Um, high lift is locked in place because, you know, people like to steal them. Spare tire strapped down as well. You know, obviously with the whole setup underneath, don't have room for a spare tire under the car, so I had to put it somewhere. Now on the other side of the tray, we've got the same bar set up here. Um, and I'm holding some recovery tracks. Um, and again, it holds it at an angle sort of keeps it from the inside. Um, so theoretically, this is what hits before anything else. Um, if we look at the back of the car, got these uh, eBay spec tail lights. Um, oh, my voice. But yeah, everyone's got these tail lights. They look sick, they work, they're cheap. So of course I got them. I've also got uh, just a little reversing light there. That used to be one of my side lights. Um, and if any of you have this model Hilux, you'd know that this tow bar is not what it usually looks like. So I've actually re-welded it cut it and um, modified it to suit so it's about six inches taller it used to sit like down here um, so I've recently modified that and made it uh, made it look a lot better and fit nicer and yeah of course we just got your standard uh, D shackle there to pull out and that's pretty much the outside of the car you know everything I haven't mentioned is either stock or not worth mentioning now if we were to take a look at the underside of the car that's where things get a lot more interesting this is solid front axle swap done with a LN106, so the model before this, um, that's when they stopped making the solid front axles for the Hiluxes. All leaf sprung, as you can see, I chose to do leafs and not coils, purely because it was a little bit cheaper um, and can be more reliable. This diff is braced. It's got a bracing at the top there, done by TM Fabrication, and it's got a high steer that is superior um, and inverted U-bolts, which is also superior. So under here, we've just got um, regular this is actually LN167 rear springs up front. So it, it, you know, it's a much longer spring than regular and it has a lot more droop. Keeping these springs from just bouncing is a 12 inch Bilstein shock, um, both sides. Um, I've also got extended brake lines to uh, suit for the more flex. Take a look under here. We've got a Tony Shires fabrication custom front drive shaft. And so this drive shaft, um, it just allows a lot more travel. So this whole spline travels a lot further down so there can be a lot more droop before the drive shaft actually comes out because um, because of these rears up front or the rear springs at the front conversion um, it actually pushed the diff forward about 35 or oh, it pushed the diff forward a fair way we'll just say that because I don't know the actual number so the original drive shaft literally would just not it would not fit um, so that is why I had to get that drive shaft um, underneath here, we just have a regular G52 transmission. No reduction gears or anything in the transfer. One day, hopefully. And then back here, we've got a HD Automotive um, rear tail shaft or drive shaft, whatever you want to call it. Um, I.e. that's brand new, as you can tell. I haven't uh, taken that anywhere just purely because I only just bought it. We've got a regular fuel tank under here. I used to have a long range tank, but um, with the with the rear setup, which you'll see in a second, it actually was rubbing my drive shaft against my fuel tank. Um, so I've just gone back to the stock, um, which is okay. You know, I haven't actually, I mean, we'll see if I actually really dislike having to fuel up all the time. 
but if we come around to the back here um, this is where things have also changed a fair bit from stock so we've got the regular you know everything's stock standard on the diff but I have a, a Shires fabrication bolt-in inversion bar um, which these are standard shocks uh, no no extra length or anything they're just the regular shocks it actually allows for a lot more travel um, which is which is awesome it's what you want um, also looking back at these leaves they are custom leaves it's, it's a fully custom pack as you can see they're a bit how you going the bottom five leaves are actually from my old suspension and then the top two are from an RG Colorado um, and that is purely to suit more length so that I can fit these 200 mil shackles um, and it wasn't a vertical shackle you know it, it just helps get a good shackle angle and allows for a lot more droop then obviously for the wheels just running regular sun razors these are 16 inch rims um, and 33 inch mud tires these are just the Comforcer mud tires so they're the cheap eBay ones but from what I can tell, there's nothing wrong with them. They do struggle a little bit when it's wet on rock climbs and stuff like that, but for the price that you pay, you can't really fault them. I think that they're, that they're just, I think that the price is perfect for them. So you're gonna have to excuse the bit of mud. I haven't, I haven't given a good clean up under here, but this is the 5L motor, well 5LE. Everything is pretty much stock standard other than the turbo and the crossover pipe. So the turbo is just a standard CT20. Um, I went with that just because it was cheap and I'm not looking for high boost at all, as you can tell. I'm running 9 PSI um, because, well one, it's the CT20, so it will blow up if I, if I push it any further. Two, because I don't have any more fuel, I can't manually adjust how much fuel I put into the engine. So if I was to try and run more boost anyway, it would just lean out the engine and it would get super duper hot. These crossover pipes in all of their glory are done by SMF fabrication as well as my exhaust. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much everything in the engine bay here. Some of you might be able to notice I don't have an aircon anymore. That happened when I put the turbo on. If I was to do it again, I would definitely make sure, make leave, like leave room for an aircon. But honestly, I've done it for two years now without an aircon, so it's not that bad. If we come along to the inside, hop into the driver's seat, along with all my mess. In here, we've got boost and EGTs. Um, that's just a regular boost gauge. It only goes up to about 9 PSI, like I said before. EGTs only ever really exceed 300 degrees if I'm going up a bridge or up a hill in fourth gear or fifth gear. So the EGTs are actually really good um, for being so lean. But you can see we've got 450,414 kilometers on the beast. Got an aftermarket mirror here just because it's a bit, you know, it adds a bit more view and my old one was getting pretty crusty i've got my uhf mounted to the i just screwed this into the uh to this light box sort of thing so i just literally screwed that in there and it works well microphone for the phone up there uh head unit here just your i don't know just your regular old head unit doesn't do anything special um these are my toes not a whole lot going on at the front here um, but we'll take a look in the back and that's where more of the interesting stuff is happening all right so if we look in the back um, as you can see, I'm still sort of working out everything here. We have a false floor here that used to be where the seats were. Um, and underneath, I have a bunch of storage. I store, you know, I've got my med kit there, med kit, a first aid kit. Right now, I don't have actually a good way to get into it, but if you just punch it, you can take this sheet off and there's a bunch of, um, bunch of other stuff under there. So I'll leave that for now. But on this side of our 12 volt board, we have a Siggy plug. We've got two USB ports and then some switches. The only thing, this switch is the only one that works and that controls the little rock light that I've got under there. So if we look on this side, I've got the solar controller, fuse box, um, and the fridge, which is a 40 liter Waco CFX. It does well, never skipped a beat. Make sure you clean it though after you go camping. I'll figure that out the hard way. But yeah, that's pretty much the car. That is the car in all of its glory. Um, if you have a car, same model or anything like that, let me know. I'd love to see what you have done. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one.